think when you listen to music, usually a visual will pop into your your brain, and you'll sort of imagine yourself being somewhere, or it'll remind you of being in a specific place when you first heard that song. That's just the weird way your brain works. It's like seeing two photographs side by side and finding some sort of connection between them, even though that was not the photographer's intent. Yeah, location and music, I feel like, are pretty hand in hand. Yeah, Berkeley feels like home. Um, home is where you know my stuff is, or where my friends are, where my family is. I recorded the, the album at my house. I don't like being in studios. I don't like recording in studios. I try to work on music as much as I can. On tour, it's just too hard sometimes, really. You sort of have to be in the zone, or I do at least. I have to be on a place where I don't have so many distractions. It's good to get your mind off of music, too, in that whole process. Um, I go, you know, take Michael for a walk or, or work on some visual stuff. There are no rules when it comes to design or music. Again, there's just good aesthetic and bad aesthetic. I'm always referencing like 90s and 70s type things, 80s. Those are my favorite decades of art and music. I think that that'll be sort of always present in my, my art. I'll bring my sketchbook in and then I'll show Brennan and then he'll sort of start thinking about like what each drawing or something could be. Like he'll see a shirt or he'll see a poster or um, like a logo or something and then we'll sort of turn it into something. And then um, like, like we've made these pins that were just like a doodle of mine. Yeah, it ended up being like a logo for the record label and stuff. With company records, I have full control of the aesthetic and the roster. It made perfect sense to sort of jump on that opportunity to finally have the label that I think I would want to have. Yeah, I'm not looking for kids that are wanting to make money out of, out of music or anything. Just looking for artists that are making really good music. I do most of my drawings on the airplane. If I'm not doing music, I'm like drawing or reading. And then... When did you draw like the original Michael logo? Or like have here. you been drawing it? The original Michael logo is like right here. I don't know, a lot of these are just kind of just like random little logo ideas. They're not even like full composition like drawings or anything. I, I, can't, I can't really do those types of things. I think my attention span is too small. I would nerd out so much on skateboard or deck designs. And like the local skate videos that were put out always had like good music too. That's what really got me into like the more indie music scene was the skate video songs. I think I saw a couple of kids skating in my neighborhood and then I went to like the big lots and bought like this $20 skateboard and it would not roll when you pushed it. That was my first experience skateboarding. Like the thing about skateboarding is that it's really down to earth. The dudes that skate are like, they're like normal people, you know, they're not like in it to go pro or anything. It's just like you just do it because you're bored in your neighborhood and it's the weekend or something. With skateboarding, like there's no other sport out there that encourages, you know, videography, music, fashion and like design and like that's like the perfect sport for me so I was all in.
manifesting all this stuff. When it comes to musicians making music, it should be for them. They shouldn't be making music that they think that people want or making music for people to sort of just buy. That's kind of like a, the number one rule though. I make music for me, and it's like, that's the way it should be. Uh, honesty in music is primary. Um, it's like the, the one thing um, I feel like your lyrics should have is honesty. Even if it's not about you and it's a story, it should be, it should be about an experience that is real. It should be coming from a real place at least. There's nothing wrong with writing fictional songs, but if a listener can't relate to it, it's gonna be hard for someone to sort of connect with you. And that's what the whole point of releasing music is for, is like to relate with people. I think the internet puts a filter on culture, for sure. I think music is passing down honesty, but the internet is not passing down honesty. You can put on this persona, or you can show that you're living this kind of lifestyle or something, but it should be a tool, not like a, a crutch, you know? The reason people aim to sort of make art and sort of to push themselves to be creative is so that they can really find out more about themselves. Just be as weird as you can get. Do what you want, do your thing, and as long as you believe in it and you're not doing it for anyone else or you know because you think it sounds cool, then people will probably believe you and think that you can be from, you know, small town in the south and still like make big records. I didn't have that much musical training. I took piano from when I was eight to like 12 and I hated it. I wasn't until like 15 I felt like recording the stuff that I sort of wrote. It kind of just happened. I got tired of learning other people's songs. The bedroom producer movement is sort of the next wave of like bands. When I was growing up, there were maybe like 10 high school bands at your high school and like now it's just all like beat makers and like producers. Jay Dilla, he would just sample whatever genre he thought sounded good. When you start sampling music, you just start listening for like grooves. You don't hear genre, you just hear like uh, the music for really what it is. The biggest thing I did really was just put my music out for free. Um, I just put like a couple of CDRs out there and um, a couple of like media fire links and just let it spread and it eventually, yeah, got me signed and stuff. Really you just have to keep focused and just sort of just keep doing it for yourself and then your audience should eventually grow on its own. Good music is progressive and classic at the same time. It's timeless. I make music as Toro y Moi in Les Sins. I run company records. I like graphic design. I have a dog named Michael. My name is Chaz Bundig. <laughs>